Hi guys, it's Ian from OSBFX. It is uh, Friday the 17th of September 2021. It's 8.18 in the morning in the UK. Uh, in this morning roundup video, I want to discuss uh, the trade setups um, that we've taken, or I've taken, uh, in our room OSBFX uh, on Telegram, um, and also um, trade setups that I'm potentially looking at today. Canadian dollar is coming into focus this morning um, and Aussie against the uh, Canadian do dollar uh, looks quite interesting. So let's get to the charts. A uh, quick review um, of what we talked about yesterday in the room um, and basically where we are. Uh, so Aussie yen, <clears throat> we have I've just highlighted on the right hand side here Auss Aussie yen and Aussie New Zealand and the reasoning behind uh, that was, if we go to the single currency baskets, um, the long-term bias, I believe, is still to the downside for uh, Aussie dollar, but we've seen sort of intraday bounces, uh, and I think that these are going to continue. So this is the eight-hour chart. So this is where I believe we're, we're at. Um, what we're looking for here is this leg uh, to the upside and then a, a, a pull lower um, to then project uh, Aussie uh, higher. So at the moment, bullish cycle, then bearish cycle, then bullish cycle, basically. Um, and going to this chart here, this is actually bespoke support. So we pushed through it yesterday. I actually got long uh, of the Aussie crosses in here, not on this dip down here. Um, if we move that back to there, it actually made um, quite a nice uh, crab pattern from this level. So I was happy to take um, long Aussie trades. But what's happened is we actually spiked lower. And what's looking like now is a Gartley. So taking the, C, the BC leg higher uh, in Aussie uh, to then uh, take it lower to form that, to then take it higher again. So uh, choppy uh, trading over the next... Um, few days and weeks so this is the Aussie bias and if we go back to uh, these charts here and again uh, the red lines are um, basic levels that line up with fibs uh, the black lines are, are bespoke support and resistance levels and if you can see here this was the spike lower uh, and again I got on in, in in this range here whereas actually the prime entry was here which was 79.74, which lined up with a 161.8% and again making a perfect crab. So on the Aussie yen trade, um, not looking to outstay my welcome. I believe this is quite decent resistance. Remember the BC leg normally moves up to between 78.6 and 88.6 of the AB leg. So this is looking quite prime uh, as a target level up around 81.57. What I have done this morning, um, I looked at uh, the uh, single currency Aussie and there was a lot of nine counts on DMARC and if you know anything about DMARC, DMARC basically highlights nine counts as corrections so I was concerned that I was going to get a correction to the downside so I've banked uh, half my profit on uh, Aussie um, yen and on Aussie New Zealand so going to Aussie New Zealand and this is the one that I really like and this is the one that I really want to keep uh, long term. Um, obviously, this area up here uh, is going to be extremely relevant. 104.51 is the previous swing high. Uh, we'll see where the crosses are at that point because what could happen is we could make a reverse head and shoulders pattern. So this being the left shoulder, this forming the neckline down to form the head up to the neckline again and then the right shoulder. So this, that's potentially what's going to happen. And if you can see here, just that little dip in Aussie yesterday, Let's just bring this out. Just made it to the 161.8%, which is 102.79. So unfortunately not for me, uh, but potentially for some, I suppose, it could have been a pit perfect entry uh, on that level. And if we go to bigger charts, when I say bigger charts, I want bigger time frames. Look at this daily. This is quite interesting. If we can get a higher close on the daily, which is looking pretty lightly, then that formation there is a morning doji star uh, and often uh, highlights at the end of a trend and the start of a new upward bias. Um, if we go to this chart here, which is a weekly, this is a Gartley. 
but there's nothing to say that this isn't the end of a um, a bullish Gartley pattern. Um, next week, because I don't think we're going to get a high close this week on the weekly chart, but next week, if we do get up to that resistance level, then again, you're going to get a morning doji star in um, Aussie against New Zealand on the weekly chart, and that again could potentially uh, highlight the base for uh, this cross currency. So bullish on Aussie, at least over the uh, short uh, term, but against the New Zealand dollar, um, I think there's potential uh, for a long term trade there. Um, so I've taken partial profit. I've got a stop to entry uh, and just going to see how that plays up um, around about the uh, 104.50 level. So that's a review of yesterday. Uh, let's have a look at today. Now, going through the single currencies, these charts will probably make your eyes water for most people because uh, they're extremely complicated. Basically, what uh, happens is this is a monthly, this is a weekly, daily, eight hour, four hour, and then down to hourly. And I'm looking for cipher patterns. Um, I'm also looking for levels around my bespoke support and resistance levels, uh, which are the dotted black lines. Um, so dollar, euro nowhere, really. Uh, that was an unexpected bounce for me. It wasn't in any uh, euro products. Um, the only thing I could think of potentially and again, this looks quite messy, is off this 127.2. But normally uh, what happens is um, if you are going to uh, form the Gartley, it'll hit the 78.6, not the 127.2. So at the moment, I'm sort of well away uh, from um, Euro because I don't really have a clue what's going on in it, to be honest. Um, Sterling, I'd like to sell rallies. If you look at this chart here, this looks really nice for a move to the downside towards this confluence area, uh, which in turn will make a butterfly formation. Um, one thing you should note on these daily charts, look at these spikes on, on other single currencies. You don't really get these spikes um, on sterling and on euro. You just get huge spikes. So it's really got to be quite nimble to try and catch the base or the top. Uh, of these uh, these ranges, uh, it's not 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 easy, not an easy task. Um, Swiss, and again, I'd love to buy into Swiss, but then we're looking at risk currencies. Okay, the dollar still looks lower, uh, the yen still looks lower, and as such, the Swiss should still go lower. But we are hitting some support here. There's a 61.8 percent fib here, so a little bit lower. Remember the the red lines are um, fib levels. Uh, and if we go to this chart here, which is the hourly chart, there's two fibs here. This is a um, butterfly where we stalled yesterday. And then down to this level is a crab formation. So I think the crab is more likely and also uh, looking at every single uh, Swiss cross. I just can't see any reason for it to turn around as yet. So again, I'm going to monitor it, but it's not really uh, the main focus today. Uh, CAD. So big picture CAD is for a move to the upside. Um, I've had quite a lot of positive news lately for oil as well. Um, and that's been a driving factor between uh, for, or for the Canadian dollar. But one thing you should note here as well is it was short of the 88.6, okay, 21.72, and it came short. And what we've got here. Uh, on this hourly chart is, let's just draw it in a bit, it's two levels. So the red level is the fib level, like I said, black level is bespoke resistance. So very close to uh, a resistance level uh, on um, the Canadian dollar. And like I said, looking at the other cross currencies, yen's moving lower, um, New Zealand, uh, is, is moving lower. It was off a head and shoulders pattern that we talked about yesterday. Um, the only one that really sort of grabs my interest is still Aussie. Uh, Aussie. So I've highlighted here Aussie against Canadian dollar. And if we go to this chart, and I've, the, the entry, prime entry, would have been overnight. But also remember, um, Aussie's moving to the upside. There's always, always scope for a pullback. Um, 
and Canadian, um, the single Canadian currency hasn't hit its resistance level, not quite. So even though I've uh, potentially missed uh, a long in, uh, entry in Aussie CAD, and I'll just get a chart up, um, there is potential for it to dip lower and, uh, and, and give a surprise. Um, I'm just going to go to this chart here. I've uh, made a right mess of those, so let's not highlight those. So this is the eight hour chart. Okay, um, 92.31 makes a pretty perfect crab pattern. So basically what I'd look for is a move higher. Remember what we're saying, we'll move higher in Aussie um, and a move lower in Canadian dollar. And as such, that's a move higher in Aussie against the Canadian dollar. And this looks like it could form a very nice um, pattern, a bat pattern. So basically, yes, it looks like this is running away, but um, potentially it, it could dip lower uh, to give uh, a long entry. So I'm looking for a dip lower. And I was looking at these spikes here as well. Um, what was support becomes resistance, etc., etc., etc. And if we look at that level where it just dipped to uh, overnight, if you look here, that was um, resistance, 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 support, support, support. So anywhere around sort of 92.30, 92.33, I've got a, uh, a trigger in at 92.35, taking uh, the uh, three point spread into consideration. Um, and I will then be looking for a move up here in Aussie CAD and if we go back to Aussie just to remind us where we are and to potentially not outstay our welcome Aussie could be the main driving factor uh, in that BC leg in Aussie CAD okay I hope that all makes sense uh, good luck today if I see anything else I will be posting it into the telegram group please come and join us it's completely free um, I'll leave uh, the address at the end of this video Many thanks, and uh, if I don't speak to you again, uh, have a lovely weekend.